Hey folks, this is the Fighting Nerd and his co-host Jolly Roger. And what I'm going to do today is a knife video all about knife misconceptions. And these are the same kind of misconceptions about weapons in general and some guns and guns and things like that. We're going to go talk about knives because knives are kind of my thing. And there's a lot of misconceptions about knives as what they're used for and their relative lethality to each other and are born of ignorance about edged weapons or edged implements in general, even tools. Sadly, this, this ignorance on the part of lawmakers leads to some really, really silly knife laws. Uh, to start off with, let's go back to the bad guy knife. Now, the bad guy knife uh, is uh, a phenomenon. Well, first of all, knife is kind of a knife is kind of a bad guy weapon. You know, in all the old westerns, you know, you hear hammer. Oh, it's a term in general, but used in the westerns a lot. The backstabber, right? Because only bad guys would use a knife and stab somebody in the back. I wouldn't tell that to like British commandos or any of the special ops guys. But, you know, as opposed to you know, a gun, which seems honorable, or even a sword, which is the symbol of honor in a lot of cultures. Knives are the bad guy weapons. Or they're the last resort of the good guy. Right? When he has to do a bad thing in order to win. Dirty Harry with a switchblade. Right, they say it's a, his boss says it's a disgrace that a police officer knows how to use a weapon like that. Of course, it does save Harry's life in, in that movie. But Switchblade, really through the 30s, 40s, and 50s, uh, in movies and later TV, the Switchblade was the bad guy. If I don't have one of those, I had a really cheap one that I think I gave away. I was never a fan of a fan of switch blades. I never trusted their locking mechanism. Their blades were usually kind of thin and weak. But they were the bad guy knife. You know, gang members in West Side Story and you know, all the Edward G. Robertson gangster movies, right? Because who would want a knife that you could open with one hand just by touching a button? Now, uh, from what I understand, there are I'm sure that there are experts out there that might be able to correct me on this. But it was more it made it made as a tool, you know, that you know, for I when I understand fishermen who needed something they can open one handed while dealing with lines and that's on fishing hook. I may be wrong about that, that may just be legend. But the point is only bad guys use switch blades, and that was the symbol of a bad guy with a knife. It was almost cliche. And that was really up until like the 60s, all through the 70s in a lot of ways. And then the 80s came along, and you got one of these. The old ballet song, the butterfly knife. And this was the bad guy knife of the 80s. This is what was used at Menace, Magnum P.I., and members of the a -team and MacGyver. And, you know, it is exotic. You can open it really cool. This, that's the only trick I know with this. I'm not a fan of the rally song either. If they're cool, this is the only one I have. They look cool. This one is particularly pretty. It's got that nice pack of wood. But, not something I would carry every day. But, and it's not really particularly good. It's a personal protection tool. It doesn't have a hand guard. The locking mechanism is good. But, even if you open it simply with one hand, uh, it's really faster just to flip something open or flip, uh, flip a, uh, a knife open with a liner locker or a model lock or something like that. Just hit the stud or the vault desk and flip it open and there you go. But this was the bad guy knife. And it quickly became illegal in a lot of places. Now the reason for that was, one of it was that people would get one of these things and not have the sense to find a trainer or at least take a grinder and dull the edge before they started practicing the little trips and spinning and 
flips and spins and whatnot. And they were coming into the uh, emergency rooms a lot with their hands sliced to pieces because the knife was evil. It wasn't that they were stupid and were doing complicated tricks requiring a lot of manual dexterity with a sharp blade. It was the knife's fault. And today, what we have in the terms of the bad guy knife, at least as I think it's becoming so, is the Karampin. Again, it's exotic. You can do little flips and extensions with it. And you hold it funny. Right? You can't do a Norman Bates with it like that, but you can slash with it. right? And you see a lot of bad guys. There was a, a really, really uh, awful television show that they spun off of the old 80s movie, Time After Time. No, no. Well, anyway, or H.G. Wells. I can't I really can't remember what the name of that movie was, but Malcolm McDowell was in it. And he played H.G. Wells, who actually made a time machine and came to the future in search of Jack the Ripper because his time machine allowed him to come into the, AI, come into the future and menace the women of modern-day Los Angeles. Now, in the modern-day remake that was on a few months ago, the Ripper used a Karambit because it's a bad guy knife. It looks strange, right? And you can do strange stuff with it. And in a lot of places, these are being made illegal. Right. My question is why? Well, a Karambit is nothing but a fighting knife. Okay, true. But does it really make it any deadlier than a kitchen knife? Well, yeah, it's, it is designed primarily for the, the modern ones. That's like that one are pretty much designed to do harm to other human beings. But they could be used as a personal protection tool. It doesn't mean you're going to go out there and rob somebody or slaughter prostitutes. It's a cutting tool. It has an edge, it has a tip, it has a handle, and it will cut. So will your kitchen knife. So will your, the, the carving knife you have. So will your paring knife, if you have it sharp. And so will that little case pen knife that you keep in your pocket. And my point is, that because these types of knives look exotic, and yeah, you can open them with one hand, and you can do the flips and everything like that, they freak people out. And there's no reason for that. There is no reason to make this, this knife illegal. Let's say something like this less menacing knife, a little Gerber profile. can do just as much damage to flesh as the valley song. The butterfly knife, this isn't actually a valley song. As the karambit or as the switchblade. And that's just what's essentially true. Okay, you have this buck hunting knife. Looks like a hunting knife. People are used to seeing this, at least in my area. I know there are people that carry something like this openly on their belt all year round. Nobody bats an eye. But this this is buck eleven ninety five. Wow. Nice little knife. Uh, a little knife trivia. This is, I'm pretty sure this is the one that knife left that Chuck Norris left embedded in the chest of a Vietnamese soldier in the first missing in action movie and I was freaking out that he left a beautiful knife in the ice chest and just kept going. Nice knife. Go get your knife. But this is a hunting knife that most people that's a hunting knife. As long as you don't uh, use it uh, to commit mayhem or at least unjustified mayhem nobody bats an eyelash. But it will carve up flesh as surely as this will and as surely as this will. Now, we have
have this nice conventional hunting knife. And then you have this, this. Right? This is kind of an Indo, Indo Persian inspired knife. But if you showed most people this knife, they would freak out with it. One, it does kind of look Middle Eastern, and people have a little bit uh, paranoid, maybe a bit paranoid about this tradition. Uh, Middle East, people from the Middle East right now. But also, it is not what people normally consider an everyday knife. It's about the same size as the buck. It will cut like the buck. But because of its design, it engenders a bit of a fear response in people. But it, sh it, but it shouldn't. They both are designed to perform exactly the same function, to cut stuff. There is no reason to make this illegal, and this isn't, but I'm using it as an example, of course. There is no reason to make this illegal, and there is this illegal. But there are some people, ignorant people, sadly, that hold government positions, government titles or positions in government, that would look at this thing and flip out. <sighs> And uh, this, as I said, this one, the bad guy knife of the 80s, and really the 90s too. And occasionally a good guy you would see with one of these, but mostly it was a bad guy knife. And I'm going to turn around here. Just a second. And get my CRKT M16 CSF. This is one of my regular carry knives. I I have a few knives that I carry on a regular basis, depending on where I am and what situation I find myself in. But this thing has pretty much been my constant companion for about three years. It is a liner lock with a special lock system from CRKT, so it, does, it pretty much will not go closed on you until you want it to. But it's relatively the same size as the evil butterfly knife. I will learn how to keep things in frame. About the same size, perform the same function. They're my collection. They're sharp. They're pretty much just as sharp. One is just as sharp as the other. But this one, aside from its being a rather large folder, is legal to carry in most states, uh, except if they have places that have like a three inch lawn. But in many places this is legal to carry. And this is why? Because you can do this with it and flip it around. Like I said before, people were stupid, didn't know enough to either dull the blade out before they started playing with it like that, or they couldn't do it and they didn't want to get a trainer. And they cut themselves. And they blame the knife and not the stupid idiot that played with a sharp blade and tried to flip it around like he was Jackie Chan. Now this knife, because of its flippers, opens faster. You don't have to do all of this. It's got a better locking mechanism. It's got this nice hand guard so it's safer. But it is legal to carry this in more places than it is this. Now there are some places like the People's Socialist Republic of New York where anything that might be used for personal protection is illegal because they want all their citizens to be helpless before violent criminals. But so many of their laws, so many laws anymore are based on people that see something on TV and think it looks scary. Or those people are misusing it and try to save people from themselves. And when government tries to save you from yourself, that is the first sign to tear because what are they going to save you from next? You know, we go to the People's Socialist Republic of New York again, right, where they have a tax on soda because people are drinking too much soda and it's making them too fat and it's ruining their teeth. 
So the government is going to put a tax on soda and regulate. And actually, in, in New York, if I'm not mistaken, they haven't taken this book law off the books, where they're not allowed to sell you a soft drink of over a certain size. Right. They, and with the butterfly knives. You might be used to protect yourself, but you also just flip it around. They might be cutting yourself, and they're scary looking. You just don't need one of these. We're going to save you from yourself. And it is. Again, it's based on ignorance. There is no, nothing inherently more lethal about a Karambit than there is about a common, ordinary hunting knife. Now, like I said, in places like, you know, Chicago, San Francisco, pretty much anything you do to defend yourself is illegal. And any implement of self-protection is illegal. But a lot of them, they justify these laws by saying that this particular type of implement, self-protection implement, is inherently more lethal or more dangerous than the other. And that's just nonsense. Pure and simple. I got another example here, another buck knife. Now this is not also just a hunting knife, but boy is this one what you can. Look at that, he's got the serrations here, he's got these doohickey, and he's got the teeth on here. It's he's got the camouflaged handle. This thing looks wicked. But is there any real difference between this and this? If somebody with intent to harm someone has either one? No. And there is, and there's where we have to go with intent. Any edged weapon, from a box cutter to a katana. A samurai sword to you, not an edged weapons people. Can be deadly. But it depends on the intention and the resolve of the person wielding it. They held up the planes that crashed into the World Trade Center. They held up the planes, excuse me, they held up the planes that crashed into the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. And the one that went down in Pennsylvania with box cutters. Now, yes, you're not allowed to have box cutters on the plane. And there are probably uh, people that think that you should be outlaw all box cutters, period. But it wasn't the blade that was the problem. It was the determination and the intention of the people holding those blades. And I have touched on this in other videos for other subjects, but it is more and more evident to me every day that they want to blame inanimate objects instead of taking and having people take personal responsibility for their own actions. With the gun debate. Well, he wouldn't have gone in and robbed that store and shot that poor man if he didn't have access to a gun. That is the thinking. If you take the guns away, nobody's going to rob any more 7-Elevens. Well, of course, that's idiotic. But that's the basis of the idea of controlling guns. What would happen if tomorrow you magically made all the guns disappear? People would grow up with 7-Elevens with knives. And there would be some people in those 7-Elevens defending themselves with knives or other edge weapons or swords. There's a video on the internet. Some guy comes up with a great big, huge monster shamshire like sword when somebody tries to rob it. Right? And then you can make all the guns, I mean, excuse me, all the knives and edge weapons disappear the day after that. What happens? Somebody's going to become robbing a store with golf clubs. People are going to be robbing stores with golf clubs and baseball bats. 
Criminals are the problem. People with bad intentions are the problem. Then what's not the problem are the implements they use. I have over 60 knives in my collection. I have been stupid on occasion and cut myself while playing with my knives. That's kind of a hazard when you're a knife collector. It just comes with the territory. But not once has any of my knives whispered to me and say, let's go stab somebody. I want to stab somebody. Take me out to stab somebody. Not once has any of my knives said, hey, let's go out and rob a store together. The only way either of those events might happen is if I decide, or someone else, if I decide to take some piece out of my collection and go do some harm, or somebody steals my knives, one of my knives, and goes to do some harm. So whenever you see the bad guy knife on a television, or the bad guy who just likes using knives, you have to remember that no implement, no tool, whether it's a personal protection tool or a mechanics tool, is inherently good or bad. And I'm not saying anything. But I think this I, that media shapes people's perceptions and gets the idea that this knife, this knife is evil, and this knife isn't. This knife is a tool only for criminals, and this knife isn't. This knife only does what, and these knives will only do what I tell them to do. People need to take responsibility for their actions, and society needs to be holding people accountable for their actions. Simple. I, I, I don't really don't understand the argument of someplace making this knife illegal because you can open it one-handed and it looks exotic but this one doesn't look so exotic it opens faster it's perfectly fine it makes no sense Texas has the right idea. There are no legal, they just recently passed a law. All lives in Texas are legal. They're legal until you do something that's illegal using that knife. And that's something we need to do nationally. I usually don't like to see federal law supplant state and local, but this is a case where it's, it's necessary. Because for knife guys, for knife owners, you never know what you're doing. Here in Ohio, Almost every city and every municipality has a different law about knives. You could be in Canton, Ohio, and the knife you have in your pocket, whatever it may be, may be perfectly legal there. You drive 20 minutes into Akron, and the knife you're carrying is illegal. Then you go up into Cleveland, you have all the suburbs, near Cleveland, you have all the suburbs like Parma and Alliance and independence, or wherever, every one of them has a different knife law. How are you supposed to keep up with that? You can't. So the bottom line, folks, just because it's a bad guy knife on TV, and it doesn't look like a normal knife, doesn't make it bad. A knife is as good or as bad as the person holding it, just like a gun, just like a golf club. Or, for that matter, a scolding a cup of coffee. What happens if somebody just decides to throw in a, a scolding hot cup of coffee in someone's face? It's about attention. It's about personal responsibility. Don't be fooled into the whole idea of the evil life.
There's no such thing as a bad guy. There's no such thing as a good guy. There are only knives held by people who happen to be either good or bad. So, once again, I bid you, draw your blades only with just purpose, and sheathe them only with honor. This is the Fighting Nerd, and I am out.